Okay. A few weeks ago, I got a flood of emails, text messages, Twitters, tweets, <laughs> bleats. You know, these days, when someone wants to tell you something, it doesn't just come once. It comes in every particular medium, every which way possible. And the news was, the big news, was that an electric car was being featured in the catalog of catalogs, in the mainstream catalog of Neiman Marcus. <laughs> what wonderful news. I'm all excited. Neiman Marcus has recognized that electric cars are here. I am very excited. I then begin to sit down and open all these tweets and emails and text messages and go to the page. And what do I find? The electric car in the Neiman Marcus catalog. What do we have? Do we have the PowerPoint? <laughs> these are electric. They're light and fluffy. You can plug them in at night and drive around during the day. No gas used. I suddenly realized that I had seen this before. I knew this vehicle. Two years ago, I was at Green Man at the Playa, Burning Man. Who's been, who's there? And I'm walking along the Playa with my friend Josh, and what do we see? Out of the corner of the eye, a movement about three feet high moving slowly, as art cars do, across the playa. I look, I turn, I first see a blueberry, <laughs> then a second blueberry, then a third. And what I saw was this. <laughs> the prototype of the electric vehicle, Muffin Mobile. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you, Neiman Marcus, for bringing us an electric vehicle, but wow. I have to say, though, I did not know that anyone from that store was at Burning Man, so. <laughs> All righty. Electric cars, how exciting. We hear all about them every day, not just from Neiman Marcus. In the newspapers, here and there, everywhere. But what's the reality? What's the reality of the energy revolution today? What is the reality of solar and wind? Where are we? Let's take a status check for a moment. 250 million cars in America. How many in the world? Anybody? A guess, how many cars in the world? Half a billion. 800 million cars in the world today. We have 30% of them. We in America, 4% of the population, we have 30% of the vehicles in the world. And now, yes, it's exciting. New electric cars are coming. Yes, some of these companies are starting to produce. Nissan has even said they're going to produce, and the Volt is coming. Wonderful. We did some calculations back at the shop. Put pencil to paper. Use a little spreadsheeting. At current rates, green vehicles will not reach even 5% of our fleet here in this nation or around the world before 2030. Say one million PHEVs. What is a PHEV? Plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. One million PHEVs or EVs by 2015. 0.4%. 0.4%. So we added up all the electric car companies and all their best projections. We took them at their word. Yes. <laughs> it's going to happen. You'll sell out everything. You'll make everything. It just barely gets us. 
to eight, 900,000 by 2015. And so, my friends, we need to have a different approach. We are not on a pathway towards 5%, 10%, 30%, 50% changeover. We are not there yet. How can we get there? China, 65 million cars today. How many people in China, last time we checked? 1.3 billion, on their way to 300 million vehicles in the next six, seven years. So the problem, my friends, is getting worse. Not only are we not on a pathway, we're about to add 200 plus million more cars to the world, over a billion cars. And yet, every day we see in the press, every day we see online, excitement. Yes, the electric cars. We must take hold of reality if we want to change this, this future. Energy. Where is our solar? Where is our wind? We all know there's more solar energy that hits this planet in 70 minutes than we need for the entire year. But here we are in America with half of coal. Half of our energy coming from coal. Less than 4% renewables. And of that, where is solar? Where's all the solar that we hear about, that we see, that we think we see all around the place? United States, how much power do we consume? 371,000 megawatts, megawatt hours. Every year, this is how much we produce and consume. 371,000. Of that, how much is solar? How much is solar? There's got to be a lot of it. Solar now, right? We see it everywhere. The governors are talking about it. The government's talking about it. It's everywhere. It must be everywhere now. Not 108,000. No, 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 my friends. 108 megawatt hours. 108. That's it. How can we change this? Do you want to change this? Yes. Do you want to change this? Yes. How can we do this together? Two for two. What does that mean? I wasn't sure myself until I made this slide. I added one word. What does this word mean? What tribe is this from? What first nation? Apache, a spiritual or community leader that's not appointed, not designated, just volunteer, leads by example. Nantan, leads by example. The way the Apaches have lived for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Two for two, Nantan. Let us find out what this phrase means. I'm curious too. Let's take the second two degrees. Okay, if you go to Greenland, I invite everyone to go to Greenland. It's actually only four hours away from the East Coast. <laughs> a little more from here, but it's a great trip. It's fun, it's exciting. And what do you see? Right out of the window, melting ice. So you can see it for yourself. We know we're on a pathway right now for two degrees unless we do something drastically different. I'm not talking about the current solar programs. I'm not talking about the current programs of electric vehicles. My friends, we will not get there on those programs. What do we need to do? Who's heard of six degrees? Six degrees of what? Separation. Separation. Where did that come from? Who? What happened? In 1967, <laughs> in 1967, there was an experiment done by Milgram. And what did he find when he had people send letters through strangers to a, to a certain somebody in Cambridge, Mass? What did he find? 
We think that's what happened. We actually went back into the records, checked online. No, he actually found that we were four degrees separation. Who, who created six degrees of separation? Who brought us six degrees of separation? It was a playwright who liked the alliter of nature of six degrees of separation. Four degrees of separation kind of sounds flat. <laughs> then we see Will Smith on the big screen. Six degrees of separation, first a play, then a movie. Six degrees of separation, voila. But we start to ask again a question. We put pencil to paper again. And we start to ask, are we still in a world of four or five or six degrees? What kind of world are we in now? What kind of world are we moving in? Well, let's see. Let's just take Facebook as a proxy. Not everyone's on Facebook, not everyone uses Facebook, but just as, a, as a, an example. So a few years ago, there were 80 million people on Facebook, and then there were 100 million people, and then, sorry, 80 million people, and now there's 300 million people, and on average, how many friends did each of those people have? The number of friends on average has gone up. So even though it's gone beyond its core friend circles, where you expect to have the most friends per person, now it's going up and up, the number of friends per person. And within those 120 average number of friends per person, there's more and more likely you have a super connector, a person with 500 friends. One person in your group of 120 friends. What does that mean? What is the implication of that? That we are probably moving to a two degree universe. If you run the mathematics and you look at something like the friend suggester, has anyone seen this on Facebook, friend suggester? Has anyone accepted any of these suggested friends? You know who you are. <laughs> if I had asked you that two years ago, no hands up, because the friend suggester was not very good. It wasn't very accurate. It was just almost random. Maybe yeah, maybe no. It wasn't like Amazon and all those services that spot on, wow, how'd they know that? <laughs> yes, I would like that book, yes, yes. but it got better over time. The friend suggester got better. It started looking at hobbies. It started looking at all kinds of interests. And more and more people have been accepting the friend suggestion. <laughs> and so we've now discovered, sometimes, you know, before Facebook, sometimes years would go by, I would have a friend out, say, out here in the Bay Area, I'd say, and then suddenly another friend, completely, I thought, unrelated to this friend, shows up at a cocktail party. I'm like, you know that person? I didn't know that. Has that happened to folks here? Yeah. But now, that's gonna happen faster and faster. It's called search and discovery, discovery of our networks. We have networks, sometimes we're not even aware of all the connections, but these kinds of tools are accelerating that discovery. And so that means that we're accelerating towards each other faster and faster and faster. The mathematics are there. I'm not saying everyone on your Facebook is a real friend. I know for you, they, you think they are, but no. <laughs> but the point is, there's someone you can reach out and touch. There's somebody you can receive a message from. There's somebody, you see their status go up and says, I'm going to Bioneers. You're like, what is Bioneers? What is that? Someone says, I'm doing a green chemistry ex experiment. That's what a lot of my friends say. No. <laughs> but this is changing right as we speak here today. Out there, in the other Bioneers locations, there are people who are connected to people here, across the land, across the world. That is happening more and more. But it's not happening uniformly. If we look as examples, there are communities in Brooklyn, New York, that are now at two degrees, one mutual friend away from each other. Communities of certain immigrants, communities, one community in particular that I came from in Brooklyn, New York, that is definitely two degrees away, because everyone knows everybody in D.C. because of this influx of people who will work together on the campaign and other places and past administrations, so on and so forth. Our estimate is it's probably three degrees within the government circle right now in D.C. Here in Northern California, in Techland, in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, probably no more than four degrees in that particular world. So 
each of these communities is moving towards two degrees at a different rate, but they're moving. And is that an opportunity? What can we do with that? What can we do with this two degree universe that we could not do before? Well, here's one thing. Fender bender. I'm driving along, suddenly, someone crashes into me, like, oh God, I'm pissed. I'm gonna get out of my car. I'm gonna walk over to that person. I'm gonna start yelling or whatever. Or at the very least, I'm annoyed. I was supposed to be on time for my speech at Bioneers and now I can't be there. We're gonna call the police, we're gonna wait, we're gonna change information. It's a confrontational situation. It's negative, negative energy, bad. <laughs> but what if, what if, and since most of us drive on average near our homes, near our works, workplaces, and we might have an iPhone or a Blackberry or some other kind of smart device, and they might have one increasingly, and we might have an app, an app that doesn't exist today but probably will exist by the end of this lecture. <laughs> I know your people out there are writing it right now. <laughs> and the app will buzz. My iPhone will buzz and it will say, you have two mutual friends with this individual. <laughs> you're two degrees away, you're three degrees away, you're connected, you each know Bobby. And by the way, you're probably going, both going to Bobby's birthday on Friday. <laughs> In the 30 seconds it takes me to walk over to this guy. The conversation is different. Forget the police. Let's exchange some info. Great to see you. I'll see you at the birthday party. <laughs> Let the insurance companies work it out, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> DIY, Maker Faire, do it yourself. Who loves Maker Faire? That's the subject of another lecture. Sorry, no time today. I love Maker Faire. So, again, First Nation wisdom. Somehow, in 1854, he knew about the web. I'm not sure how, but he knew about the web. He foresaw what we are talking about today. But seriously, this is an opportunity. We are all related. Pace. So I want to hold this notion now of a two degree universe, this new two degree universe where we're getting more and more connected. And I want to talk about a word and then come back to two degrees. A word that I believe will be on the tips of everyone in every household over the next year, two years. Pace. When we think about scale, when we think about solar, when we think about wind, when we think about retrofitting for efficiency, changing our windows and changing the bulbs and changing our air conditioners and heaters, it costs money. And yes, some of us might have some extra money, we can do it, but it is difficult. We need to find a scalable way to make this happen. Two guys in Berkeley, said, I think we have a way. Cisco DeVries and Dan came and said, there's something that we can do by issuing a new bond and having the proceeds of that bond go to, in loans to people in Berkeley and have them use it for solar and retrofit and change their lives. They launched it, they came to me and a friend and we said, let's take this national. We're now in 15 states in six months. Pace has passed in 15 states in six months. Thank you. Pace will pass in another 10 states in the next six or nine months. Pace means that your county, your city, your state will have the ability to give you a low cost loan that you can use 20 years to pay back. 20 years is a small surcharge in your property taxes, not going against your credit, not going against your home equity lines. A different pot attached to the house, attached to the commercial building. This is the scale we have been waiting for. This can change everything, but it needs you. The loans alone will not do it. Global Solar Center, something else we put out there, solar blocks, 
neighborhood by neighborhood, people going to this site and other sites like it, typing an address, getting a free quote, how can I get solar? How can I use my PACE loan to get this? Get a quote via satellite imagery. No longer people coming out to your house. Use the satellite imagery, use Google. So two degrees for two degrees means what? It means we are now more connected. We have power now, each one of us here, sitting here today, sitting in Anchorage, sitting in all the different places we are beaming to today and watching on the internet. We have the ability right now to change things in a much bigger way. When you post to your friends, when you share this, when you tell people about what you are doing, when you find out from your peer group, from your friends group, from acquaintances, from your weak links, don't only think about your close friends. When you think pace, when you think about this scale, I want you to think about people you do not know as well. Reach out to them and ask them, is pace happening in your state? Is it happening? Are there low-cost loans available now that you can use, that I can use, that we can all use to make the difference? And together we can make that happen. These financial tools are as important as the technology tools of solar and wind. They may be even more important because they will allow us finally to scale. 108 out of 370,000, my friends, is not acceptable for solar. One million vehicles out of 250 million vehicles is not acceptable, my friends. With PACE loans, you can put that charging station in your vehicle, in your, in your house. You can put charging stations in commercial buildings, in shopping centers, so on and so forth. We can actually make this happen. But it is imperative, and I ask you, will you use your two degrees to fight two degrees? Will you? And so, each of us can be a Nantan. Where was this picture taken? Anyone guess? At the playa. It all comes back to the playa. This is exactly what I wore on the playa. No. But we each now can be Nantan. We each can be leaders who step up and say, now I have the tools. I have a new tool called the two degree universe. Your universe might be four degrees now or three degrees. You might be part of a number of universes. You might be part of a two degree universe and a three and a four. We are coming, we are hurling towards each other right now as we speak. The technology and the tools are bringing us together and that is a great thing, but now we must use it. Do not wait five years, do not wait 10 years. This is something we each can do. Are there traditional methods of activism? Yes, and continue along those lines. Do we should go into DC and continue to fight in Washington and state capitals? Yes. But we must take it now to another level. We cannot wait for our governments. We cannot wait for mandates. We cannot wait for these subsidies and programs. A lot has come, maybe more is coming, but as I hope I've shared with you, the scale and the pace is not happening. We need pace to pick up the pace. We can each be Nantan. Out there, we can each do this. I encourage you to think out there, wherever you are right now, of are there four or five people I can ask about pace? Are there four or five people I can check out pacenow.org and see if this is something we can do? PaceNow.org, a nonprofit, come to our site, check it out. We can change this. My friends, we are now in a new two degree universe. Let us use this two degree universe to avoid those next two degrees of temperature. Thank you very much. Thank you.